Well, hi everyone, Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to All Things Retirement. Well, in this video, I'm going to address a specific question. And the specific question is, how much retirement income can you generate if you save $450,000 of retirement savings? Well, like a lot of things in life, it's all about the details and the assumptions. So we'll cover off the assumptions. We're going to use assumptions that flow out of our 30 years as a team, helping clients transition successfully into retirement. I'll also have at least two other scenarios that I think you'll find helpful. Now, if you're new to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss future content. And if you like the video, make sure you click like. Okay, let's get into some of the key assumptions for this particular scenario. Keep in mind, when I go through the example for you just in a minute, you'll see a financial modeling software. So if you want to find out how your specific scenario would look like for 500,000 or a million or whatever you saved for retirement, there is a link in the show notes uh, to our website. You can find out how you can get a complimentary retirement forecast so that your specific question can be addressed. So just go to the show notes to hit that link. So we've made a few assumptions. We're dealing with a couple scenario. So Sam and Sally, and they are retiring at age 65. So that's the first assumption we're making in this scenario. Now, the other thing is that we've assumed that they each have $200,000 of RSP accounts. So the exactly the same dollar amount in RSP accounts and neither of them have individual pension plans to supplement uh, their cash flow. As well, they have $25,000 each in their tax-free savings accounts for a total of 50,000. So they have $400,000 of RSP capital and $50,000 of tax-free savings account investment capital. As well, their home is valued at $700,000. So that's their balance sheet. Now let's look at some other assumptions. We've assumed that the inflation rate through the length of the analysis is uh, 3% per year and the investment returns 4.5%. Now, this is one of the reasons why you need to update these uh, forecasts on a regular basis because the environment is changing constantly. So right now, inflation is uh, higher than that. We think right now in the current environment, it's probably gonna settle out to be lower and that 3% is probably a reasonable inflation rate to embed in this analysis. A 4.5% return is not aggressive. So essentially, we're making a return of 1% 0.5% above the inflation rate, which is a conservative portfolio. We've assumed that old age security and counter pension plan will be fully cost of living indexed at 3%. We've assumed the tax brackets will be increased at 3% as well, so that there's no bracket creep uh, as a result of inflationary pressures. And we've assumed that the Canada pension plan benefits for both Sam and Sally would be at 85% of the CPP maximum. So they've been working for most of their adult life, and they've been making contributions, uh, for the most part at maximum insurable earnings, but most people will not be at the full 100% CPP benefit uh, because there'll be years usually where they haven't been making maximum contributions to Canada pension plans. So they'll be at 85% of the maximum, and of course, they'll be getting their old age security benefits when they retire. So what you'll see on the screen right now is just a, a sample of the financial planning forecast that we provide for folks. Again, if you want to find out how you, how you can get your complimentary copy, just go to our website and there's a link uh, in the show notes that'll take you to our homepage. So this is the basic report. It's going to cover off the key, uh, key assumptions. Again, as I mentioned before, we assume the inflation rate would be 3%. We use 3% indexing for old age security and Canada pension plan in terms of the um, old age security and Canada pension bond benefits. Uh, they would be at 85% of the CPP maximum, each uh, Sally and Sam, and 100% of the old age security benefits. In terms of investment returns, we use 4.5% for their portfolio assets, 1.5% for real estate assets. So those are the key assumptions. So what you see here is the balance sheet. So of course they've got uh, $25,000 each in RSP accounts for a total of 50000 and then the RIF totals, uh, RSP totals for 400000 and the real estate. Now the first chart that I'll show you from this analysis is the after-tax spending. So what we ran here was a maximum after-tax spend from age 65 right through to age 95. So blended mortality between Sam and Sally. And what this is, uh, is $54,000 of after-tax income being generated each year. And it's going up over this time period because of the 3% inflation rate. By the time they get into age 86, we're now talking about $100,000 of after-tax income. And by life expectancy, we're well above $125,000 of after-tax income requirements to spend at $54,000 in today's dollars. Now, 
the thing that's important to keep in mind is when you look at this analysis, um, our experience is that you do see expenses begin to plateau. So will we see this constant ever increasing 3% after tax cash flow? Probably not. But what we say to clients is this builds in a bit of a buffer for future contingencies, maybe healthcare costs or other surprises along the way. So again, the bottom line is in this scenario with all the assumptions we've used, if they can get 4.5% on average on their portfolio, and inflation averaged about 3%, and then taking into, into account the other assumptions, they could generate potentially $54,000 per year in after-tax income. I'll just show you another statement that just looks at their balance sheet or net worth statement. So you can see here their balance sheet changes over time, and so they've got a net worth position between uh, a million and a million two, the blue here is their registered capital, so the RSP RIFs. The green is their tax free savings account. The black here is their real estate. You can see in this analysis that the real estate goes up over time and it goes up um, you know, every single year. In fact, it's close to a million dollars by life expectancy. Uh, the green is the tax free savings account and the blue is the RSP account. So what's happening here is we're drawing down on the RSP slash RIF accounts in the blue over time. They're theoretically fully depleted by age 89. And the green is the tax-free savings accounts that we don't use until their late 80s. And then that green capital, the TFSAs, begin to be used to keep funding cash flow. So we're basically killing the goose that lays the golden egg uh, every single year to maintain a constant spending in inflation-adjusted dollars of $54,000 per year in after-tax income. Obviously, for clients that want to preserve um, overall value and they didn't want to see the uh, investment assets deplete over time, they would have to reduce their after-tax cash flow requirements. Again, the black here, what our experience has been, typically the real estate will get sold before age 95, obviously. But the bottom line is we never work the real estate equity into the cash flows. They're kept separate. What we find is that people, as they get older, they'll sell their principal residence. They might move into a life lease, a condo, a retirement residence, um, maybe into rental arrangements. And the capital they realize from that sale would be used to subsidize the costs of accommodation. So the black, which is real estate, basically is always being used for some sort of accommodation, whether it's actually real estate property or money from the sale of that property that's used to fund uh, ongoing monthly costs for retirement residents or condo costs or life lease costs. So this chart breaks down the sources of income. So again, you can see on the chart going from age 65 to age 95. In the blue, that represents Canada Pension Plan that's going up over time because of the cost of living adjustments. You've got the black, which is old age security benefits. That's going up as well. You've got the green, which would be RSP RIF withdrawals every year. And you can see it's um, fully depleted by the 91st year. And then thereafter in the orange is the TFSA account that's being used to fund lifestyle costs for the last few years of the cash flow analysis. Now let's take a look at the actual numbers year by year for the cash flows. So what you see here is a, a roll up of both Sam and Sally's income. So we've totaled their Canada Pension Plan and their Old Age Security benefits together as well as their total RSP or RIF withdrawals each year to fund their income. So in 2022, when they're in their 65th year, in real dollars, they're spending at $54,726. In inflation adjusted dollars, that number goes up every year. So you can see it goes from 54,726. By age 70, that number is now up to 63,442. And by their 78th year on this chart, they're up to 80,367. So it has to go up every year to cope with inflation. You can see the roll-up of their Canada Pension Plan income. For the two of them, it totals 25573 That's going up every single year in this analysis with the cost of living indexing. And then the old age security benefits, the total for both of them is 15414 If I go across this table, I can see the RIF withdrawals or RSP withdrawals. Those are bracketed items. And so we can see the 19893 20,423, 21,040. This is what's coming out of their investment portfolio every year to supplement their cash flow. And then we also calculate their total tax bill. So we look at their total taxable income each year between the two of them. So at that level of taxable income, they're at the lowest tax rate. 
So again, it gives them a year by year sense as to how they're funding their cash flow, how much they need to take out of their portfolio. This uh, RSP RIF column is very helpful because it gives you a very clear sense as to what you have to have at the ready in your portfolio to fund your cash flow requirements. And then this chart gives you a net worth projection against, again, it's a roll up of both uh, Sam and Sally's financial assets, their real estate, and this shows them how their balance sheet changes over the, over time as they're spending cash flow. So you can see the TFSA accounts continue to grow. The RSP accounts are declining over time because they're using that money right away. And then their assets and real estate. Their net worth position goes from 1.159 million to about 1.2 million. Okay, so we see the overall net worth position actually increasing for a period of time. And then if we go to the uh, age 79 to age 80, you begin to see this RSP RIF column. It's fully depleted by age 90. So all assets are gone. And now they're beginning to use their tax free savings account. So it hits a peak of 157 and then it's 136. And then it keeps going down as they use it to fund their cash flow requirements. Real estate assets, so their real assets, by the time they get to age 95, we're projecting a value of 1.1 million. It was a pretty conservative estimate. We used 1.5% indexing on the real estate over the years. Okay, so that's the, the basic analysis and the mechanics of how we calculate the after-tax cash flows. Obviously, there's a lot of assumptions that go into it. I'm going to cover one more assumption. So we'll take a look at what if Sam and Sally decided that they wanted to defer retirement for just five years. So they'll defer their Canada pension plan, their old age security, and the draws in their portfolio. And they wanted to see what level of income they could generate because they both had some side hustle opportunities that would generate some cash flow. And they, they thought that might buy them a few years of, um, of deferral and putting pressure on their pension income. So let's take a look at that. So why would you consider deferring even at age 70 for your retirement income planning? Well, for some people, longevity risk uh, is a real concern for them. They, they have um, family heritage where people live long lives. Um, people are just healthier in general, so they're living longer. And we're seeing you know, people concerned genuinely about putting too much pressure on their portfolio. So some people are fortunate. They have, like I said, side hustles or the ability to generate some additional income to look after their basic uh, expenses and can afford to defer until age 70, let's say. Now, the benefit as it relates to Canada Pension Plan is that your CPP benefits will be 42% higher at age 70 compared to age 65. And if you deferred old age security benefits, those benefits will be 36% higher. So there's some real benefits there. And then you, you tag on to that the deferral of taking money from your portfolio. It's got another five years of compounding before you take income out. So what does that do in terms of the analysis for Sam and Sally? So what you see on the screen is the revised analysis. So we didn't change any of the other assumptions. The only assumption change was they begin drawing on their portfolio in their 70th year and they've deferred Canada Pension Plan and Old Age Security benefits for five years until age 70. So when you look at the financial forecast, you may recall that the previous forecast had them spending a sustainable rate of $54,000 per year in after-tax money. And this analysis confirms that they can spend at $71,425 in after-tax dollars. So it made uh, a pretty significant uh, difference in terms of after-tax cash flow. So for them, at age 70, if they're healthy and they're energetic and they're concerned about longevity risk, this probably would be a very good option for them to consider, particularly if they have the ability to look after cash flow needs from part-time income and side hustle opportunities. Well, I hope you found that review helpful. As you can see, retirement income planning is very specific to your family's needs, but this is a basic case study to show you how we can calculate the various sustainable after-tax incomes. If you're in a situation where you're five years away from retirement, maybe already retired, and you just want to get confirmation you're tracking in the right direction, make sure you go to the show notes where there's a link to our website. You can get to our homepage where we talk about our complimentary retirement income planning service. As well, if you are not subscribed to our channel, make sure you do that so you don't miss future content. We're posting content all the time on various aspects of retirement income planning and overall wealth planning issues and opportunities. You take care. Bye-bye.